My name is John Hadley, and I'm here to discuss Amendment 44 to the Snapper Grouper Fishery Management Plan of the South Atlantic Region, um, which focuses on yellowtail snapper and specifically specifies a single acceptable biolog biological catch and annual catch limit for yellowtail snapper in the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico, as well as modifies sector allocations and accountability measures for yellowtail snapper. So a bit of background, yellowtail snapper are considered a single stock extending across the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico uh, Council management jurisdictions. The acceptable biological uh, catch, the ABC, is split between the councils, 75% uh, going to the South Atlantic uh, jurisdiction and 25% going to the Gulf of Mexico jurisdiction. The uh, <clears throat> stock was assessed in uh, most recently in 2012 and uh, it, the stock assessment indicated that the yellowtail snapper uh, stock is neither overfished nor experiencing overfishing. The uh, actions and alternatives uh, within this amendment focus a lot on uh, acceptable biological catch, ABC, uh, the annual catch limit, ACL, and accountability measures, AM. Um, and just to review these terms, the uh, ABC, or the acceptable biological catch, is defined as the level of a stock or stock uh, complex's annual catch that accounts for the scientific uncertainty in the estimate of the overfishing limit and any other scientific uncertainty. The annual catch limit um, <clears throat> is the level of an annual catch of a stock that, if met or exceeded, triggers some corrective action. This corrective action being the accountability measure um, which is a management control established by the council to prevent ACLs from being exceeded or to correct overages of ACLs if they occur. Looking at this um, as a figure, you can see the, the bar um, moving from red, uh, from rather from green to red, uh, uh, red being increased harvest, the highest level um, uh, of these reference points is, over, is the overfishing limit, the OFL, this is followed by the acceptable biological catch, ABC, which um, may be set equal to, and, uh, equal to uh, the annual catch limit or the annual catch limit may be set lower as well. Looking at the landings trends for yellowtail snapper in the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, this graph shows the, the uh, landing trends and um, on the bottom, the green dash line are recreational landings towards the top. The blue dash line are commercial landings. Uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, commercial landings of yellowtail snapper tend to dominate the total the uh, total landings, and the uh, uh, but the tend to remain under the or rather the total landings tend to remain under the current total ACL, which is the dash line at the very top. Moving over to the South Atlantic. Uh, again, the bottom green dashed line being recreational landings. The uh, line above that, the dashed blue line, commercial landings, um, uh, much like the Gulf, uh, commercial landings do dominate uh, the total yellowtail snapper landings in the South Atlantic. Um, <clears throat> however, the total landings uh, have not reached the current total ACL, which is the black dotted line towards the top. However, um, with a little bit of uh, going back to some of the background information, in 2015, commercial landings exceeded the sector annual catch limit, and the commercial harvest was closed on October 31st. It remained closed for the remainder of the calendar year. Additionally, in the same year, the recreational sector did not harvest 45% of the recreational sector ACL, resulting in approximately 550,000 pounds of yellowtail snapper that went unharvested. In response to the commercial closure in the South Atlantic coinciding with uncaught quota, the South Atlantic Council is considering taking action. Um, the Council is considering options to allow flexibility in managing the ACL for yellowtail snapper uh, to prevent or reduce the uh, length of harvest closures in the commercial yellowtail snapper fishery. And so what would specifically would Amendment 44 do? There are two actions uh, in this amendment. 
one would consolidate the yellowtail snapper acceptable biological catch and annual catch limits for the Gulf of Mexico and the South Atlantic. This is action one. Uh, the second action would allow quota sharing between the commercial and recreational sectors or reallocate a larger portion of the total ACL to the commercial sector based on observed landings in the yellowtail snapper fishery. Moving into the, the uh, details of the proposed actions and alternatives. In action one, uh, specifying a single acceptable biological catch, ABC, and annual catch limit, ACL, for yellowtail snapper in, uh, in the South, South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico regions. Alternative one, which is no action, um, shows the, uh, it, it, it's essentially a status quo. In the South Atlantic, um, the ABC is a, a bit over 3 million pounds. The ACL is set equal to ABC, and there are sector allocations. The commercial allocation uh, is 52.56% of the total ACL. The recreational allocation is 47.44% of the total ACL. And there are separate accountability measures uh, for each sector. The Gulf of Mexico, uh, in, or rather in the Gulf of Mexico, the ABC is a little over 1 million pounds. The ACL is set at 89% of the acceptable biological catch, uh, which is a little over 900,000 pounds. Uh, there are no sector allocations in the Gulf. It's treated, the ACL is treated as a stock ACL, and there's a single accountability measure that covers both sectors. Moving over to the south, back to the South Atlantic, that again has the, the sector allocations, and looking at how these sector allocations have played out um, in recent in recent years, uh, looking at yellowtail snapper landings, which are the two graphs on the right. On the top, it shows the commercial uh, sector ACL in relation to historic landings, and it shows that uh, on the on the far right of that graph, where the uh, commercial sector exceeded the ACL in 2015. Uh, it should be noted in 2016. The fishing year changed uh, to start August 1st, so it's unclear if uh, this level of harvest will continue. Moving down to the recreational sector, uh, the recreational sector typically harvests well below its allocation in the South Atlantic. So how does the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico Council uh, determine the division of the acceptable bio biological catch? Uh, this is, it's based on the Florida Keys jurisdictional boundary um, between the Gulf of Mexico and the South Atlantic regions for yellowtail snapper. As mentioned in the South Atlantic, 75% of the ABC, uh, or, uh, rather, goes to the South Atlantic. 25% uh, of the ABC goes to the Gulf of Mexico. This was established by using um, an equation that weighted 50% of average landings from 1993 uh, to 2008 with weighted at 50 percent uh, weighted average landings from 2006 through 2008. Uh, this was set in the South Atlantic, uh, South Atlantic Council's uh, Comprehensive Annual Catch Limit Amendment, which uh, took place in 2011. Moving on to uh, how the South Atlantic Council determines the sector allocations uh, for yellowtail snapper. The South Atlantic Council sets the yellowtail sector uh, snapper sector allocations using the following method. Sector allocation um, weights the catch history um, and the current with the current trend. And so there's a 50-50 weighting there. The catch history being average landings from 1986 through 2008, and the current trend um, being average landings from 2006 through 2008. So moving back into action one. Um, and beyond the, uh, the status quo, moving into the al al other alternatives, alternative two is to manage yellowtail snapper under a single combined ACL and ABC for the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico regions, but to manage the ACL under the South Atlantic sector allocations and accountability measures. In this case, as mentioned, there would be sector se uh, uh, separate sector allocations for the commercial and recreational fisheries, as well as separate sector accountability measures. 
looking at this graphically, uh, the, the graph on top shows combined commercial uh, landings of yellowtail snapper from the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico and assumes the current, um, the current South Atlantic allocation between the commercial and recreational sectors. In this case, the combined landings um, in 2015 would, have, would meet this uh, potential commercial ACL. Moving to recreation, the potential recreational sector ACL, uh, the combined land, recreational landings of yellowtail snapper from the South Atlantic and, and Gulf of Mexico typically fall well below this potential sector ACL. Looking at alternative three, uh, this alternative would manage yellowtail snapper under a single combined ABC and ACL for the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico regions, but manage the ACL under the Gulf of Mexico accountability measure. In this case, there would be no sector allocations and a single accountability measure that applies to both sectors where a harvest would not close for either sector until the ACL was met. Looking at um, this potential ACL um, and combined recreational and commercial landings from both the, the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico, you can see that the combined landings typically do not reach this, what would be a stock ACL. And that's all for action one. Moving over to action two, this would revise sector allocations and accountability measures for South Atlantic yellowtail snapper. So alternative one, now action, as mentioned earlier, the commercial allocation in the South Atlantic is 52.56% of the total ACL, which is um, just under 1.6 million pounds. The recreational allocation is 47.44%, which is just, um, just over approximately 1.44 million pounds. Additionally, as mentioned, there are separate sector accountability measures in the South Atlantic. Moving into alternative two, this, would main, this alternative would maintain current sector ACLs, but revise the accountability measure to not close harvest for either sector until the total ACL is met. <clears throat> harvest will not close when one sector meets or exceeds its ACL, as long as the other sector is under harvesting its ACL by an equal or greater amount. The fishery would close for both sectors if the total ACL is met, regardless of which sector landed more fish. And this is very similar to the current Gulf accountability measure. Looking at alternative three, this alternative would um, modify the sector allocations, hence also modifying the sector ACLs. Uh, this, uh, the subalternatives of alternative three allocate a larger portion of the total ACL to the commercial sector, with which uh, in the subalternatives range from 58% to 72 percent of the total ACL with the corresponding um, poundage values in the bullet points below. Looking at this graphically, how this would compare to historic landings in the South Atlantic and the potential commercial sector uh, ACL and the recreational sector ACL, um, all of the subalternatives of alternative three would um, create a commercial sector ACL above observed uh, historic landings. For the recreational sector, um, this holds true as well for alternative 3A and 3B. However, um, the potential recreational ACL under subalternative 3C and 3D uh, were exceeded in 2014. Should levels reach, uh, reach this again or exceed this, um, an accountability measure would be triggered. Moving on to alternative four, which uh, uh, sets aside a portion of the total ACL that can be used by either sector as a common pool allocation. There are four different sub-alternatives for this common pool, and it would be a percentage of the total ACL. This ranges from one to 10% of the total ACL. Uh, the remaining, um, after, after the common pool was removed, the remaining total ACL, ACL would be split between the commercial and recreational sectors according to the current uh, South Atlantic allocations. And then the two rows on the far right show the potential upper, upper limits of the commercial and recreational uh, amended ACLs with the common pool added.
again, looking at this graphically, comparing it to historic landings in the commercial and recreational uh, sectors in the South Atlantic, uh, <clears throat> with the, uh, the dotted lines being the, being the observed landings, the, um, the solid colored lines being the uh, potential sector ACLs under the different subalternatives. Uh, for most years, the commercial landings would fall under all of these subalternatives, uh, with the exception of the um, higher uh, observed landings in 2015, um, which uh, are above subalternative 4A, 4B, and 4C, but below, slightly below 4D. The um, potential recreational sector ACLs under all the subalternatives are higher than the observed historic landings. Finally, moving into alternative five of action two, uh, this alternative conditionally transfers a certain percentage of the ACL from a sector that is not landing its ACL, which could be termed the donating sector, to the other sector that is landing all or almost all of its ACL or allocation, which would be termed the receiving sector. The transfer options um, range from five to 20%. Um, these are subalternatives 5A through 5D of the donating sector's unadjusted ACL. However, um, as part of the conditional transfer, the receiving sector must land at least 90% of its allocation. Additionally, uh, there's a stipulation that uh, there's a minimum uh, threshold for whether the transfer occurs that is based upon the donating sector's landings. In this case, the donating sector would have to be under harvesting its allocation by a given percentage bef uh, four or five years straight before um, any, any transfer of allocation could occur. Those are all the alternatives of uh, action one and action two. Looking forward uh, to potential timing, uh, public hearings will be held in January and February of 2017 the council will review public hearing comments and make needed changes at their March meeting in 2017. And the council may, uh, may possibly take final action to approve uh, the amendment for secretarial review in June 2017. This slide shows um, the specifics on how to provide comment outside of the public hearings. <laughs> Um, for written comments, the council requests that they be submitted using the online public comment form available at the address uh, listed. Uh, additionally, comments can be submitted <clears throat> uh, by mail uh, or by fax. Um, additionally, for pre uh, pre the uh, slides of this presentation, uh, as well as access to the public hearing and scoping documents from the public hearing and scoping meetings that uh, will take place, uh, please go to the link above, or you can contact the council office at 843-571-4336. For any questions on Amendment 44, uh, feel free to email myself, John Hadley, at the email address listed uh, towards the bottom right of the screen. The, uh, fi finally, the, the public hearings um, will take place in, from mid-January through the beginning of February. Uh, and the dates and locations uh, are listed below. They, the public uh, hearings will start at 6 o'clock and end at approximately 8 o'clock uh, in the p.m. I'll be happy to field any questions. Uh, feel free to give me a call or send an email. Thank you.